Pastor Jim Rose here from the North Buffalo Grace Brethren Church in Catanning, Pennsylvania. I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope that all of you are doing well. You know, we serve an awesome God. He has many attributes, and one of those attributes I'd like to talk about this evening is the fact that he is omniscient. You know, Richard Baxter, a minister during the stormiest periods of English history, was an advisor to Lord Oliver Cromwell during the English Civil War of the 17th century. Because of his Puritan beliefs, Baxter later was persecuted, imprisoned, and forbidden to preach. At 70 years of age, suffering from severe breathing problems, he was sentenced to 18 months in prison. Although Baxter's circumstances were bleak, he had great comfort in knowing that his God was omniscient. He knew everything about his situation, and that's what the word omniscient means. It means all-knowing. God, only God, is all-knowing. That means that God has complete knowledge of everything past, present, and future. There is nothing that God does not know. There is nothing that surprises him. He knows everything that's going to happen in the future also. So that should comfort our hearts, knowing that God knows everything about every situation in our life. Because sometimes we feel like God is way out there, disconnected from us, and he doesn't really know or understand what we're going through. God knows exactly what we're going through better than ourselves, because he is omniscient. Isaiah 40, 13 to 14 says, Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has taught him. With whom did he take counsel? And who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Well, the obvious answer is what? No one. A.W. Tozer helps us to understand about the omniscience of God. He wrote, quote, God knows all that can be known, and this he knows instantly and with a fullness of perfection that includes every possible item of knowledge concerning everything that exists or could have existed anywhere in the universe at any time in the past or that may exist in the centuries or ages yet unborn. Wow. He goes on to say, God knows all courses, all thoughts, all mysteries, all enigmas, all feelings, all desires, every unuttered secret, all thrones and dominions, all personalities, all things visible and invisible in heaven and in earth. Because God knows all things perfectly, he knows no thing better than any other thing, but all things equally well. He never discovers anything. He is never surprised, never amazed. He never wonders about anything, nor except when drawing near, drawing men out from of their own good, does he seek information or ask questions. God is self-existent and self-contained and knows that no creature can ever know him perfectly. Only the infinite can know the infinite, unquote. And I say, wow, we serve an awesome God. He is amazing. Psalm 147 and verse 5 says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Well, because God's knowledge is infinite and perfect, he never needs to learn anything. There is no boundary to his knowledge. So, you see, when we pray to God, we are not telling him anything he doesn't already know. We need to remember that prayer is designed to help us uh, line up our desires with God's will. And it pleases him because it's an act of obedience to his word. But it does not supply God with any additional or new information. Well, one great fact about God's omniscience is that we need to remember that there is nothing that escapes his tension when it comes to his care for us. God knows every detail of our lives. John 2, verses 24 and 25 says, where Scripture tells us that Jesus knew all men and did not need anyone to testify concerning man, 
for he himself knew what, is, what was in man. God knows every thought, every motive, and every desire. Well, that can be good and bad, right? Because, you know, sometimes, even as Christians, we have bad thoughts. Well, you know, that this very fact about knowing that God is omniscient should help us to control our thoughts, make sure we're thinking on the right things. In Psalm 139, verse 4, David says, For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. God knows our thoughts even before we express them. Isn't that amazing? Truly, our God is awesome. Nothing or no one can hide uh, what our all-knowing God sees. In Psalm 119 or 139, 12, David wrote, Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. The darkness of night is neither a covering that obscures God's vision, nor a cloak for a person to hide his or her sin. You know, that, that ought to really comfort our hearts. And at night time, things can be scary because of the darkness. We need to remember that does not deter or hinder God in any way. God can see right through that darkness as though it's not even there. That should comfort our heart, knowing that God sees everything around us and he's watching out for us. According to John 3.19, the natural tendency of humankind is to love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But whatever people try to hide their sin, the brilliant light of God, his omniscience exposes it. It brings it out. And I shared one time on our church service that um, uh, when I was doing drywall work, I would... Uh, uh, put the compound on there and sand it off some and, and fill in the joints and put the tape on and, and then I'd look back and I'd go, well, that looks pretty good. But then I would take a light and I would put a light and shine it on an angle upon the wall and boy, it would ex explode, expose all the areas where I needed to, to sand it more because you could see all the bad spots. So light exposes things and that's the way God does. He exposes all that there is. There is no secret place where you can hide anything from God. We also need to remember that God sees through every false front. Yes, deception. He can see right through deception. In Matthew 23, verses 27 and 28, Christ exposed the hypocritical Jewish religious leaders of his day. He said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! For you are like a whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, you are outwardly appear righteous to men, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Tombs were whitewashed to keep travelers uh, on their way to Jerusalem for a religious festival from mistakenly touching a tomb and becoming defiled. When a person became defiled, he had to go through the ceremony of cleansing and would be excluded from participating in certain religious activities. Even though the tombs looked clean on the outside, they still were the graves of dead people. The religious leaders were like those tombs. They were guilty of deception, and they contaminated everyone with their teaching. Christ knows every heart and nothing will deceive him, not even an outward display of religion. In Luke 16, in verse 15, Christ said, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Well, we have some questions, don't we? Are you sure that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, or are you just religious? We, we need to really ask ourselves that. Like, do I just go to church because my family goes? Do I serve Christ because my family does? Or I mean, is this just a thing I, I go through? Or, or What's the purpose? Why are we doing it? There is an eternal difference. The sad fact is that many people who go to church do not really know the Lord Jesus Christ personally. 
Jesus said in Matthew 7, 22, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. What is one of the ways we can know that we have a relationship with the Lord and will go to heaven? Jesus said, he who does the will of my Father in heaven, he said, he is the one. So no one should think he or she can play games with an all-knowing God. Ecclesiastes 12.14 says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Have you ever had a thought that it seems like some people are getting away with things? Sometimes it appears as though the sins of ungodly go unnoticed by God sometimes. Even the, the psalmist had trouble that in Psalm 73. And he looked around and could see, like, looked like the, the wicked were prospering all the time. They didn't have any problems. Uh, but yet, when he stopped and he went into the house of God and he listened to the Lord, he could see what the end of those people were like, that their end was destruction. And so, yeah, sometimes we think people are getting away with things, but they're really not. God sees absolutely everything. David, David gives us insight on this in Psalm 37, verses 7 through 11. He says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. You see, we need to remember that the prosperity of the ungodly will not last forever. There will come a day when the sin that they, those sins that they have hidden will be exposed, revealed, and they will be punished. We are often deceived about our own sin sometimes, aren't we? But God is not. He knows whose sin remains unconfessed. He knows who has put up an external facade. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Probably the most astounding fact about God's omniscience is that he knows every detail about us, think about that, and yet he still loves us. Isn't that amazing? God's love is amazing. Another great fact about God's omniscience that we need to remember is that it is truly a benefit for the Christian. God knows all about us personally, our concerns, our aches, our pains, our temptations, our worries, our trials, our weaknesses, our discouragements, our burdens, our fears, and you could go on and on. He knows every detail of them. In Luke 12, verses 6 and 7, Christ said, Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Since God cares for the little sparrows, how much more does he care for us? Amen. John MacArthur shares some thoughts about the comfort we can receive uh, concerning or because of God's omniscience. He wrote this. He says, quote, Have you ever wondered whether God has forgotten you? That's how a small group of godly people in the days of Malachi felt. They lived in the midst of a corrupt and wicked society, and they become fearful, questioning, in essence, when God judges the wicked, will he forget that we belong to him and judge us along with them? In Malachi 3, verses 16 and 17, we read, Those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name, they will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on that day that I will prepare my own possession and I will spare that, them as a man spares his own son who serves him. 
God knew of their devotion to him. He even recorded it in a book, not because he forgets, but because he wanted to provide comfort and assurance for those precious believers. God knows all who belong to him, for he put their names in the book of life before the world began. Think of that. In amazing Ephesians 1, 4 speaks of that. Like the believers in Malachi's day, David too found comfort in God's omniscience. He was aware that God was intimately acquainted with all his ways. For he said, you have taken account of my wanderings. Put my t tears in a bottle. Psalm 56, 8. It was common practice in the Orient to hire mourners for funerals. Those mourners would catch their tears in a bottle. Perhaps that was how they proved they had earned their salary. David's statement that God catches our tears tells us he knows every trial, every heartache that we go through. We should, uh, what should our response be to the wonderful truth that God is omniscient? Well, first of all, since God has complete knowledge of everything past, present, and future, we should wholly or heartedly obey his principles. Makes sense, doesn't it? We should humble ourselves before him. Are you living each day according to the principles of God's word or, or the ways and traditions of man? Let the one who knows you best establish your ways. Number two, since God is the source of all knowledge and is just in his execution of it, we should learn from him. How much of the word of God do you know? Do you spend much time reading his word each day? Commit today to learn from the source of all truth, God himself, through spending more time in his word. Number three, since God knows all our motives, thoughts, and sins, we should evaluate our motives and thoughts daily and come before him with a repentant heart. Ask God to give you a pure heart that is soft and pliable toward him and gracious towards others. Richard Baxter uh, clung to the Lord's omniscience, and you can too. Although Baxter's circumstances were bleak, this poem of his reflects his unfailing faith in our all-knowing God and Savior. Listen to what he says here. He says, quote, Lord, it belongs not to my care whether I die or live. To love and serve thee is my share, and this thy grace must give. If life be long, I will be glad, that I may long obey. If short, yet why should I be sad, to welcome endless day? Christ leads me through no darker rooms than he went through before. He that into God's kingdom comes must enter by this door. Come, Lord, when grace hath made me meet thy blessed face to see, for if thy work on earth be sweet, what will thy glory be? My knowledge of that life is small, the eye of faith is dim, but it is enough that Christ knows all, and I shall be with him. Unquote. Richard Baxter clung to the Lord's omniscience, and you can too. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are omniscient, all-knowing, everything past, present, and future. Lord, you know every detail about our aches and pains and sorrows and temptations. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember that, that you care about every detail of our life. Not only do you care, but you're involved in every detail of our life, conforming us to the image of your Son. Oh, Father, I pray that you would remind us of your wonderful attributes, and especially this one about that you are omniscience. And I pray you would help us, Lord, that we would just focus on you, look to you, depend on you, and trust you with all of our heart. Lord, we thank you and praise you for being so good to us. We love you. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' precious name, and amen. God bless you. Don't forget, this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. Let's honor our mothers. God bless you.